welcome back to Celebrity Jeopardy. Sean Connery, why don't you pick? Well, the game is afoot. I'll take anal bum cover for seven thousand. <laughs> Cover, not anal bum cover. I can read Trebek. Let's just go with letters or numbers for 200. And the answer is five. Is five a letter or a number? <laughs> well, five is definitely a number. Welcome to Flynn Dog Woodwork. Today, I've got another unique five woodworking gadgets that we need to take a look at. So let's take a look at these five gadgets and see if any of them will suit your shop. So today I've got some amazing tools for you and I'm super excited to show you these tools as a lot of these tools I've never seen before. In fact, one of these tools is so unique and I think is a groundbreaker that I'm gonna do a future video on this tool by itself with its counterparts. So let's not waste any more time and take a look at our first tool. So I've mentioned before that bit storage is a real problem for me. I tend to throw all my bits into this little container and then it can be hard to find the bit that you want. Now I have upgraded to this cabinet, which is great because you can slide your most used bits right into those sockets. But if you know me, I'm always looking for better solutions to problems I have around the shop. So when I saw this next gadget, I knew I had to give it a try. And this tool is called Hang On To Your Bits, made by Driverback. Let's take a look at this tool and see if it does what it's called. So you can always tell when a tool is made in the USA. It doesn't get more simple than hang on to your bits as a title for this tool. If we open the box, you can see it comes with a number of bits as well as a unique design feature. So let's take this tool out of the box and see exactly how it works. So one of the nice things about this tool is it's universal. If we look at the instructions, you can see that this tool will fit almost every single brand. It will fit everything from DeWalt to Ryobi, all the way up to Festool. How much money do you have? And it comes with the accessories and the instructions on how to fit all these major tools. This tool comes preloaded with four different types of bit. It comes with a Phillips head bit, a couple of star bits, as well as a square bit. Frankly, those are some of the bits that I use the most in my shop, but you can customize this and add your own bits. So how does this tool work? Well, it's essentially a strap-on. <laughs> it looks like... A strap-on for your impact driver. The first thing that you want to do is to take the accessory that's associated with your impact driver, and then you attach it to the very front. To do this, you simply slide the accessory into the two holes, and then it should be securely fastened. Once that's done, you simply slide the tool over your impact driver. Once you have the front secure, there's a little zip tie in the very back where you can lock it into place. Once you have this tool adhered to your impact driver, it kind of looks like a Gatling gun. Files inbound, 30 count! Don't fucking me, we need the feet there! But even though this thing looks really cool, let's take a look at its functionality. As you can see, you can remove the bits and place them right into the impact driver. Then it spins freely without causing any interference with the turning. Now did you see that snapback? That's one of the features that makes this tool so cool. Each one of these bits is attached to a spring that allows it to move easily backwards and forwards. The spring is located inside of this barrel. There's also a magnet that allows it to easily snap back into place. So this allows you to easily switch bits on the fly. They snap back into place and you can move on with your next bit. And as I said before, this tool allows you to store up to four bits. So you can have your favorite four bits installed with your impact driver. Four bits. This tool also comes with two replacement springs just in case you need them down the road. But that combination with the spring and the magnet really do work quite well. Well, I'm not gonna lie, this may be one of the greatest gadgets that I've ever featured on this channel. This is gonna allow me to store all my bits on board with my impact driver, and I'm never gonna lose those bits that I use on a regular basis. Well, we sure as heck started out pretty strong today. Now let's start to talk about our second tool, which is all about laying out and measuring. Now I have to get on the ground to talk about our next tool. Now on this wall are most of my layout tools, and you'll notice that most of these tools are in the color red. What? And this is one of my main problems with YouTube. 
Every single woodworker that you see has a cache of woodpecker's tools. Now these things are made in the USA, which is totally respectable. However, these things are expensive and can be out of the reach of the normal woodworker. I assume you're referring to me. I'm a student of the form. And frankly, I think it's worth taking a look at some other tools that may be just as precise. So when I saw this next tool, first of all, it was a tool that I noticed that woodpeckers didn't make. And secondly, it's a tool that's reasonably priced. So let's check it out and see if it's something you might want to add to your shop. So this next tool is the Wood Rafik Multi-Gauge. Let's get into this box and see what it's all about. So this tool is the Wood Rafik Multi-Gauge. As you can see, this has got a really unique design, so let's take a look at some of its features. So one of the first things that caught my eye about this tool is the tool is made in black with white graphics. This makes it very easy to read. The second thing that caught my eye was its unique design with the 45 degree angle on it. The third thing that caught my eye is it's got a lip. And if you've seen my channel for any period of time, you know that I love lips on tools. It also has a lip for the 45 degree angle. And this tool comes in imperial and metric, so you can get whatever measurement system you're using. Almost every nation on earth has fallen under the yoke of tyranny, the metric system, kilograms. So let's dig into this tool and let's take a look at four features that I see myself using this tool for. So first and foremost, I'll be using this tool to scribe lines. You can see that you adjust the tool by pushing the ruler forward. Then you tighten it down with this little knob on the side. Once you have this tool locked down to your desired measurement, it really couldn't be easier to scribe out your lines. In this case, I've got it measured up to three inches exactly. So with the tool set to three inches, you can rest your tool right up against the edge of your workpiece. And this is a four inch lip, so it gives you plenty of support. But not only is there a four inch lip, but there's also a four inch ruler here that gives you plenty of support for your pencil. This makes it very easy to scribe out your lines. The second use that I foresee myself using this tool for is a square. With that large lip, you can rest it on the edge of your workpiece, and it's also got this lip at the very top. This gives you plenty of support as you check your measurements. The third use that I see myself using this tool for are to make repetitive 45 degree angle marks. By simply resting the lip right up against the edge of your material, you can make repetitive 45 degree angles. Fourth and finally, I see myself using this tool as a depth gauge. Let me show you what I'm talking about. To use this tool as a depth gauge, we're simply going to unscrew the tab, take the ruler out, and place it into the opposite side. With that ruler in backwards, you can see with the lip engaged with the plywood, you can get an easily depth measurement for this sheet of plywood. Now initially when I got this ruler, I was a little bit concerned that the ruler didn't have any holes down the length of it. But my concerns were immediately alleviated once I realized how you're supposed to use this tool. By having this long four inch lip, this allows you to scribe your lines without the need for those holes. One of my main problems with this square is all those holes tend to break my lead every single time I use it. So let me know in the comments if you've seen this T feature for scribing lines on any other tool. I think this is really a game changer. Well, frankly, I think we're killing it today with these first two tools. Before we move on to our third, I ask you to do me a huge favor, hit that subscribe button, leave a like, and leave a comment. It really does help out this small woodworking channel. Also, for all the tools we're taking a look at today, I'm gonna leave links in the description below so you can go check out these tools for yourself. Now let's move on to our third tool. So a lot of us hate sanding. I'm gonna need a sanding. Ooh, I'm, finally. Not, I'm not getting much scent okay, off of it. Okay, sir. I personally enjoy it as it's a great time to sort through all my weird thoughts. But there's a certain type of sanding that I don't necessarily enjoy, and that's rounding over corners on my work pieces. Now you all know what I'm talking about. It's creeping up to those round corners that you traced out with a can on top of your work piece. I typically do this with my belt sander. But what if we had a template that could eliminate that frustration and make almost perfectly round corners every single time? Well, that's what this next tool is all about. So this next tool is the Corner Routing Guide Set made by Craig. You know I love me some Craig. Let's dig into this box and see what this set comes with. So inside the box, you're gonna get the template holder along with a template holster. Start wearing that holster with your sweatpants if you're about to fall out, bruh. Now this holds eight different templates so that you can get the unique corner you want. So first off, let's take a look at the template holder. 
As you can see, there's a nice handle on the very top to give you the support you need. If we look at the bottom of the template holder, this is where you're gonna slide in your template. And it locks into place just by sliding it in. If we flip it over, you can see there's little pins that cradle your workpiece to give you the support you need as you're running it through your router. So what templates come with this tool? Well, let's go check them out. So here are the templates that come with the set. As you can see, there's five rounded corner profiles as well as three chamfered corner profiles. With the rounded corner profiles, you can see there's a two inch, a one inch, a one and a half inch, a quarter inch, as well as a half inch. With the chamfered corner profiles, there's a two inch, a one inch, as well as a half inch. Now to use this jig, you're gonna to wanna to have a flush trim bit with a bottom mounted bearing. On your router table, that bearing will be on the very top. So what I wanna do now is to take a piece of scrap plywood and test out the largest and smallest rounded corner profile template, as well as the largest and smallest chamfered corner profile template. So here you can see I have this flush trim bit raised up so that that top mounted bearing rides right against that template face. So let's test out two rounded corner profiles first. We'll first do the quarter inch and then we'll move up to the two inch. So here are the results. We started off with a quarter inch round corner. Then we moved up to a two inch round corner. After that, we did the half inch chamfer and then we moved on to a two inch chamfer. Now I didn't use a real fancy piece of plywood here, but I can tell that each one of these quarters is a very crisp and clean cut. And it's these crisp and clean cuts that will really minimize the amount of time that we spend sanding will also reduce the amount of time creeping up on those lines over at the belt sander. So if you're looking to get those perfectly cut corners, whether you're doing something like a cutting board or a tabletop, this may be the tool for you. Well, that's gonna take us through our first three items. We only have two more to take a look at, and one of these items is super small and one's fairly large. So let's get started and take a look at the smaller of the two. So this next tool is a mini drill guide surprisingly made by Big Gator Tools. Rocky. Let's go check it out. So in the past, I featured two drill guides, including this Craig drill guide, along with the Milescraft drill block. The problem with these drill guides is they only go from one half of an inch all the way down to one eighth of an inch. The problem is, if you take a look at my drill bits, you can see I have a lot of drill bits that go well below the one eighth of an inch. So how do we get these smaller bits perfectly lined up so they're going completely perpendicular to your workpiece? Well, that's where we need to take a look at this little tool made by Big Gator. So here you can see the size comparison of this mini drill guide versus the Craig drill guide, as well as the Milescraft drill block. The nice thing about this drill guide is it picks up where those other two left off. If we take a closer look at the drill guide, you can see there's 21 holes here that allow you to use your smaller drill bits. If we look right here, this is 1 8 of an inch, which is where those other drill guides left off. It goes all the way down to 3 64 of an inch. But we also need to see the underside of this tool to see its full functionality. Personally, before I'm on the job, I like to give my undercarriage a bit of a how's your father. And that's because this is a mini V drill guide. If we take a look at the back, you can see there's a V notch cut out, and this is perfect for stabilizing things like dowels. But for me, the real value of this tool is being able to stabilize your drill bit when drilling small pilot holes for things like hinges or anything that needs a small screw. So let's test this tool out with one of my smallest drill bits at 1 16th of an inch. So first off, let's test this V-guide and drill a 1 16th of an inch hole into this dowel. And here you can see both of those drill holes drilled right into the center of this dowel. Now the only thing that I found just a little bit difficult was making sure that you get your bit into the correct hole. <laughs> You've got your dipstick in the wrong hole. Now using the same bit, let's drill a couple of holes into this plywood. 
and it might be difficult to see, but here are the two small holes that I just drilled. Now, obviously in dealing with smaller drill bits like this, you're gonna have a little bit of flex in the drill bit itself. But with its hefty steel construction, it gives you about as much support as you can expect from a small drill guide like this. Lastly, if we look on the side of the tool, you can see there's little notches here to make sure that you're hitting your hole exactly where you want it to be. So if you're looking for just a little bit more support for those smaller drill bits, this little tool made by Big Gator has got you covered. Well, that takes us through four items. Now let's move on to our fifth, which is a heck of a lot bigger and quite a bit more powerful. So this next tool caught my eye because even though it's large, it still has a handheld capability. You see, I wanted a tool that could get the job done in cutting through things as thick as a two x four and still have a smaller footprint. And another nice feature of this tool is it's corded. So you know it's not gonna get bogged down from a dying battery. So what is this tool? Well, let's go check it out. So this tool is the mini circular saw made by Hychika. Sounds like a girl I used to know in college. <laughs> the leaves are just like really funny. So let's tear into this box and see what comes with it. So inside the box, you're gonna get the circular saw itself along with a saw guide. It also comes with two dust collection ports so that you can attach it to your dust collector. There's also three blades, a wooden plastic blade, a tile blade, as well as a wood blade. So let's take a look at this handheld saw and check out some of the features. So one of the first things that I noticed was this onboard storage of the hex key. This is attached directly to the cord and this is what you're gonna use to add and remove the blade. If we take a look at the top of the saw, this is where you're actually gonna attach your dust collection chute. And it comes with a couple of different sizes so you can find the right one for you. If we look at the front of the saw, you can see there's a saw guide. And this is attached with the hex key and the screw on the very front. There's also a little adjustment here that allows you to adjust the angle of the saw. This goes all the way up to 50 degrees. If we look at the side of the saw, you can see there's a red knob here to adjust the depth of the saw. There's also a blade lock that you can use when you're changing out your blades. The other side of the saw has a little red knob for the blade guard, as well as a trigger and a trigger lock. So that's enough about the features of this saw. In the saw, I've installed a wood blade, and now let's cut through some walnut. I made my first chair when I was five, but the quality of the wood was wanting, so when I turned nine, I used my factory wages to purchase some beautiful local walnut. And you'll notice here, I've got my Festool dust collection attached to the saw, so we'll test out the dust collection along with this cut. So first off, after making my first cut, I gotta say that that dust collection works very well. I was impressed and saw very little sawdust fly off of this saw. Secondly, I really like the fact that this saw is corded. I didn't feel this saw bogged down during any of that cut. But most of all, it's this handheld grip design of this saw that I really like the most. So if you're looking for a handheld mini circular saw that fits in the palm of your hand, this may be the tool for you. Well, that's gonna do us for today, folks. I really appreciate you joining me on checking out these five uniquely designed tools that I just got from my shop. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button, leave a like, and leave a comment. It really does help out this small woodworking channel. Until next time, take care as always.